I think we'll start, even though people are still flooding in. Hi, everyone. It's wonderful to see so many of you here on this special night. My name is Kristen Locke, and I'm the spokesperson for community group North Sydney's Independent. A quick reminder before we begin, we are recording this session. So if you don't want to be seen on our recording, please turn your camera off now. You can do that by going to the bottom left of your screen and hitting stop video. So thanks everyone for joining us for Kylie Tink's launch event. Ideally, we would have been in a community hall, of course, um, but being on a screen, we will keep tonight to just over one hour. We can only take so much screen. There will be plenty of time to ask questions of Kylie in a further more interactive town hall style Zoom in a few weeks. And details of that will be broadcast through our newsletter website and in an email blast and on our socials. So keep an eye out for those details. First, I'd like to acknowledge the Wollamadagal people and the Kamaraigal country on which we are fortunate to live. Some quick housekeeping. We'll speak for an hour and a quarter, maybe a little bit longer. So pour yourself a glass of wine and get a cup of tea in hand and just relax. Feel free to use the chat. And as always, please keep any chat comments respectful and constructive. After gathering a small and rather disparate group of 20 to 25 North Sydney locals from around from someone's table earlier this year, that same group decided to have a go at finding another real independent federal representative for the next election. Inspired by others who have gone before us like Zali Stegall next door in Moringa and Helen Haynes in Indi, and with our special political heritage in North Sydney of the late Ted Mack, we dived in. In early June, North Sydney's Independent was launched at the Crow's Nest Hotel at the Crowy, and some of you here tonight were with us that day. Nearly four months later, most of that in lockdown, we are pleased, proud, and really excited to officially announce our support for Kylie Tink to run as our independent candidate in the next federal election. Many of you may have seen the front page story about Kylie in last Saturday's Sydney Morning Herald. Tonight, we're going to hear from Kylie and some special guests, all presented by the wonderful Julia Zamiro. In a couple of weeks, we're hosting an interactive town hall event where Kylie will answer your questions and share an update on her first weeks as North Sydney's independent candidate for Canberra. Now, let's really begin. And Julia Zamiro is, of course, known through our screens on shows such as Rock Quiz and Home Delivery. And she's a strong supporter of the independence movement, which is now taking place Australia wide, especially in North Sydney. And we're thrilled to have her with us tonight. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Julia. Julia will have to unmute. There we go. Can you hear yeah. me now? Great. Gotcha. gotcha. Hello, everybody. Look, I'm delighted to be swapping the sticky carpet of the Esplanade Hotel in St Kilda, where we would normally film Rockwears and indeed a, a plush kind of vintage car where we might do a home delivery, taking people back to their childhood homes to be here with you uh, tonight. Um, congratulations to you, Kylie Tink, and thank you, North Sydney, for having me. Um, look, I guess I'm thrilled to be here because I've been very fascinated by the process in the last few years of how independence seemed to really work in government for us. And uh, by doing these things, I feel like I'm learning more about the process. And I don't want voting for people to be something where they feel they haven't studied for the exam. The more information we have, the more we know when we go in and when you leave, you can feel good about what, what you've done. So Kylie Tink, congratulations. How are you? Unmuted, which is always a great way to start. I think that unmuted, I think that probably sums up this whole campaign, actually. It's North <laughs> Sydney's voice is being heard. I know. I look, look, we're still struggling in different ways with the Zoom. Kylie, it's how it works. There's a muting, there's an unmuting. It's a miracle I'm here with the lighting that I have. Um, now, Kylie, I mean, in a way, it is a little bit like a home delivery with you tonight, where we'll get to know a little bit more about you. This is what this is for. But I'm just, I really need to know. First cab mm -hmm. off the rank. 
Kylie, you spell your name in a way that is not particularly the normal way of spelling it. There's an IE version, there's a double E version sometimes. You're K-Y-L-E-A, why is that? I am. And actually, well, obviously I didn't have much say in the matter when I first came into the world. <laughs> I, I have to um, trust my parents for that. And actually, it's a really lovely story. So I was born in a small country town called Coonabarabran out in northwest New South Wales. And my mum and dad were both really young when I was born. So they were very brave from the outset. They decided this was the adventure they were going to undertake. And my mum has often said that my dad was very adamant that I needed to be born a girl with blue eyes and blonde hair, like he had his, his order in for it. And so when I was born to order on Father's Day, back, back in the day, um, mum gave dad the opportunity to name me, like it was dad's choice. And so dad decided on the name Kylie. I was only talking to mum about this the other day. She's not quite sure where he drew it from, but um, one of the things about my dad, he is the world's most patient, incredible man, but he's not a great speller. And I don't think he would mind me telling people that. So when dad went to actually register my name, um, his only reference really was day-to-day -day shopping, yeah? So he knew Meadow Lee was spelt L-E-A. So therefore, Kai Lee should be K-Y-L-E-A. So inadvertently, I'm, I'm almost named after, um, you know, a, a very easy spread that makes it go around <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> so, so, but yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, look, it's it's funny, isn't it? Because you know what right gets written on that birth certificate, it kind of sticks with you. Um, but it's great because now we have it in our minds, Kylie. Um, my father named me Julia because you could say it in many different languages, and that's proved to be correct and very useful at the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> um, so, Kylie, it's uh, not everybody that finds it within them to step up, and mm. we talk a lot about that idea, about that concept. Um, people might think it's an easy decision to make or that it, you're doing it to sort of advance something, but really it's a different feeling altogether to step up. Why have you decided that you, you want to run? Yeah, yeah. Um... It's a really good question. And I've got to say, it's the most frequent question I've been asked of late. And honestly, I'm, I think I'm, I am a born um, advocate, a born campaigner. I think, you know, from the time I was very young, I used to, my favourite question was why or why not? And, you know, can we do it better? How do we do it better? And um, so I've had an amazing opportunity to work across all sorts of areas, whether it's been domestic violence or, you know, supporting families going through breast cancer. Um, I'm currently working with young Australians who are finding it tough and, and every circumstance has been so fulfilling. But there was a moment for me, um, it was last September when I was watching what was going on in our media and it was the t at the time the Prime Minister came out and made the comment that um, regardless of New South Wales's wishes, um, the federal government would go ahead and build a gas power plant in the Hunter um, and that they would use taxpayers' dollars to do that. And it really struck me, Julia, like I heard what he was saying and I kind of, I couldn't reconcile myself with it. And then the next day I heard Michael Cannon Brooks, he was talking and, and his comment was, you know, for our Prime Minister to stand up there and say that to our country was the equivalent for him to go to work tomorrow and tell all of his programmers they could only work with abacuses and this thing just clicked in my head where you know I've, I've been a business person for over 30 years now and one thing I know to be true is businesses don't um, grow or prosper by holding on to things in the way they used to be or by you know insisting that they must stay the same and and old technology so yeah the, it, that was the moment for me that I thought I need to do something so I at that stage started looking around to see how I could get involved in advocating for renewable and sustainable energy and um, I was kind of exploring that area when a friend who actually is on this zoom tonight called me and said that she had heard there was a group of incredible people in North Sydney who had decided they were going to put an independent into Canberra they wanted to find an independent candidate to run I thought she was ringing to ask if I would know of anybody <laughs> and so I was quite floored when she said can I put your name forward and um, I guess that's that's where this experience for me began I, I really I want everyone on this call to kind of know um, I didn't start this movement and the people that are behind it are extraordinary and they're very real. They're just people like you and me, Julia, who have gotten to that point where they just, they don't feel heard anymore. And so I think 
you know, you mentioned it's a courageous thing to do. I, I feel I can draw on the courage of others in doing what I'm doing. Because if you had said to me 18 months ago, I'd be running for federal parliament, I would have laughed at you. It, it would not have been something I would have said was in my longer term picture. Um, but meeting the North Sydney independent team and then really starting to look around at the stuff that was going on, I just felt that, yeah, th this, is, this is the time for people like us to stand up and say, politics, I really believe that politics used to be about the people. I think it was about people and purpose. And I think, unfortunately, politics in Australia at the moment is about the party. And I don't think the party is listening. You know, for any politician to be able to sit in an office and say, I, I'm only to be judged once every three years when it comes time for election, I think that's, that's not great because really a politician should be judged every day by the community that they represent. Um, and so I think it's time, it is time for a, a change in the climate down in Canberra and almost a, but I feel like it's almost like a coming home. I think this is a, this is a movement about people taking politics back. So um, yeah, really, you know, it shouldn't be, it actually makes me a little bit sad that people um, are, in some instances just bemused or horrified that I'm running that's not how it should be I mean the opportunity to represent your community to speak for another group of people um that's one of the highest responsibilities you can be given you know that's that's incredibly humbling and um so I, I would like to think that we can bring this whole system back to a place where people feel confident and calm to want to put their own hands up and run and um, make do better we need to do better and we can do better I feel like there's actually a thread that runs through many independents when you read about their story where they will literally say 18 months if you'd asked me I wouldn't think it would have happened mm. and something clicks and it is that click that's turning us all on into wondering what's coming next and COVID I think certainly has accelerated that. Well there's lots of people who would like to, some special guests who'd like to pop in and wish you all the best. Uh, first up is former Australian of the Year 2007. Oh, what a year it was. Tim Flannery is joining us. Hello, Tim. Hello, Julia. How are you? Yes, very well, thank you. Good. And look, huge congratulations, Kylie. I am so proud of you. You know, I'm, I'm old enough to remember your predecessor, Ted Mack, you know, the most loved and respected politician arguably this country has ever had. And, you know, you're in that electorate that can do that. And um, I know you will you will do us all proud. I've had a little bit to do with you. I've been hugely impressed. And I'm hugely grateful that you've taken on this job. It's not something everyone would do. Uh, and I'm sure you will do it superbly. So thank you. Oh, um, thank you. I, I just think, you know, Tim, it's extraordinary to be speaking to someone like you. I know when I first met you, I was a little bit... Um, starstruck I don't mind admitting that to everyone because I the work you've done with the climate council is just extraordinary and it is what sets the light for us all to follow so you know I it it's I didn't have the privilege of knowing Ted Mack so I feel that I'm actually um, getting to know him through the stories that people are sharing with me but there's no doubt that to follow in his footsteps is a massive again responsibility but also honour you know he, he everything he stood for is everything I relate to um, and so I think if yeah it would be an incredible outcome to be able to bring that back and you know, as to the climate piece, you know, I, I, I can't believe there are people that still um, sit in our community and, and don't want to see us move faster towards, you know, a forward facing economy. The, the future is renewable, it is sustainable. And um, it, this is about our kids and our grandkids. So yeah, I, I, I feel like we are at an exciting time in, uh, for Australia. And if we can embrace it as an opportunity, I think that's the way we should be moving. Look, it is a critical time, Kylie. This is, you know, the, the sixth assessment report that the IPCC just released a few months back. Um, it really is a last warning for us. We don't have forever to do what we need to do. It's, it's, we know we can do it, but we need the political will to do it. Mm -hmm. I've seen the way that Zali Stegel has moved the dial in the federal parliament. Um, and I know that if we had two or three right-thinking independents, we'd be living in a different country. So, you know, it, it, is, it is just so important that we act now. It's not for three years hence, it's this election coming up. We need to get the change in place and start those emissions reductions, start that whole of government 
sort of overview of where we stand about the, the threats from rising sea levels to heat waves to bushfires. We need to be on top of all of that as a people to keep our society uh, robust and thriving. You know, we really do. I know you can do that. Yeah. And we need to ultimately create a vaccine as, as for climate change, as David Attenborough said. And, and that vaccine is caring for our forests and our bushland, letting them regrow, stopping deforestation, looking after our oceans, making sure that they're, they're in a healthy state and they can absorb that carbon that we need to get out of the atmosphere. I know you can be part of all of that. Um, and, and your heart, I, I think, is, is really in it. And uh, we need you. So, so make sure you win. Thanks, Tim. Look at that little look at that that's good that's a little Wimbledon claps little Wimbledon claps in the background I love it thank you Tim um uh we've also got uh a former independent MP for Wentworth the magnificent Professor Karen Phelps hello Karen hello Julian hello everybody congratulations Kylie oh thank you Karen thank you for being here it's an absolute pleasure and congratulations on your uh, nomination and candidacy through uh, the North Sydney Independent Group. Uh, Karen, I think it's, I've watched people like yourself and Kathy and Zali and Helen and Andrew, you know, and Ted, who we talked about before, you know, I think when Julia asked me before what has prompted me to run, I need to also acknowledge that it was watching, you know, watching you do what you did with that Medivac bill and, and watching Zali and Helen and Andrew all fight that fight now, like it can be done. And I, you know, just picking up on what Tim said, this is a matter of will, not, you know, we, if we have the will, I believe we can find a way. So, I mean, tell me about the Medivac, that, that must have been an extraordinary experience. Well, Kylie, it's about will and it's about numbers. And so what I think we need is have numbers on the crossbench so that we can do great things through the independent movement. Now, what we've seen so many times is great ideas just completely go nowhere because they don't have the political numbers to do that. And if we have a strong crossbench of people who are community-based with the right values, then there is so much we can achieve. And the Medivac bill was an example of that. Uh, we were able to take uh, a, a, an achievable objective which was better treatment of refugees and people seeking asylum who were being held in indefinite offshore detention and to have doctors make decisions about whether those people were needing to be transferred to Australia or not. Now, you would think that that would be a very simple matter, but it was being obstructed politically by the party political system. The fact that the independents on the crossbench were able to break through that, work with one of the, one of the major parties who really wanted to see that happened but didn't have the numbers to do it, the crossbench gave them the ability to do that. We can do that in areas like workplace reform within Parliament House, gender equality, climate change, an integrity commission, so many other areas where we desperately need to see change and Kylie, you can be part of that change. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, I, I, that's what I'm excited about, I think. And, you know, someone did say to me the other day, they were asking about my policy position, and I was explaining that the power of an independent is actually that your policy comes from your people, you know. So while I may have ideas, it, what's really important is that I get out there and speak to people across our electorate and understand where they want to go. But just on, on the human rights matter, just, just over six years ago, I worked on a campaign to get um, children out of immigration detention centres here in Australia. It was called We're Better Than This, Australia. And it was the most magnificent group of people. There were captains of industry. There were sports people. There were actors and actresses that were involved in that movement. And everybody did it for no other reason than we just believed we could do better and that what we were doing was un-Australian. You know, they wanted to call it out. And I think at the time, you know, we got the kids out only on temporary protection visas, though. You know, we felt we'd, I remember one of the members saying, we got the kids out of the burning house. But the question still becomes how are people treated in the longer term? And, you know, six years on, we're still having to ask ourselves that question. You know, what, what does it mean to be Australian? And what does it mean in how we treat others? So, you know, thank you for what you did there. I think you really did show the community that there is a better way to be. And certainly that's a lot of, of my motivation. Australia is a magnificent, diverse, vibrant community. And I think we need to live um, with confidence in that, not in fear. And I think a lot of our politics in the last 
sort of six years has been about living in fear. You know, don't look there, be afraid of them. Don't look there, don't let them in, be afraid of them. Um, Australia is better than that. And I think we can be better than that. So yeah, thank, thank you for um, wishing me well and for leading the way. Thank you, Kylie. Look, there was one question uh, that was put to me when uh, we found ourselves, and Kathy will remember this moment, we found ourselves suddenly with the, power, uh, uh, the balance of power in the House of Representatives. And I was asked, you know, how, how did it feel to have the, the balance of power uh, in the Australian Parliament for that time? And, and the answer that I gave was that it wasn't about power, it was about uh, the, the, the power of balance. It was about bringing balance to the parliamentary processes. Yeah, in, well in said. That. Well said. The very good line, Karen. I'll be popping that on a t-shirt. I mean, how good are t-shirts? Have t-shirts just been at the centre of everything we can do and letting each other know who we are and, 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 and who we'd like to chat to? It's fantastic. The t-shirt, there's a book in it, I'm sure. Hey, speaking of books, speaking of books, I picked up this recently. That's about Kathy McGowan going to Canberra. Isn't that good news right there? Um, because you know what? The more you read, the more you know. And the more opinions you can find, the more things you can find out and discover. When I did an episode of Home Delivery with Lee Lin Chin, she reminded me that she had a teacher at school who once said that you had to read 40 pages of something really good every single day. Well, I'm, I'm getting through it. It's terrific. And what a surprise, what a delight that former independent MP for Indi, Kathy McGowan, is joining us. Hello, Kathy. Hello, everybody. Julia, Ky Kylie. Uh, and I want to add my joy and congratulations to everybody else and say how much I'm looking forward to the next, the next period. So welcome. And, and thank you. No, thank you, Kathy. Actually, I've also had the pleasure of reading your book. And again, I think it was one of those things. There seems to have been this moment in time in the last 12 months where people like me who may be sitting wondering what to do have had the opportunity to be inspired by yourself and others. And, um, you know, I think particularly in reading your book, the thing that struck me, Kathy, was you, you really were and continue to be the embodiment of what a community can achieve. This wasn't about you, just as this is not about me. It's about the people that you kind of um, stand with. And I just wonder, you know, like, if you look at our community and our North Sydney community, what advice would you be giving us and me? So Kylie, I had the absolute pleasure of being invited to the Sydney Writers' Festival in May, which, gosh, seems a whole world away now. But when I was there, I got to meet some of the North Sydney people. We had a, a dinner and a gathering. Uh, so I, I know that you are going to have the absolute support that I had that made the job possible. So many people, like I know your team, are going to turn up, they're going to speak up, and they're going to step up into leadership roles. So you'll be surrounded by really that, that most safe, wonderful of safety nets that you can possibly have, which is your community. And they'll hold you warm and safe and secure like they did for me. So I've got great confidence in that. But I also wanted to say to, to you and to your team that the magic of all of this is over the next few months, you've got the chance to actually be the change you want to be, to actually run a campaign with a, with a candidate who is not going to go into the old fashioned ways, the nastiness, the bitterness, the personal antagonism. I absolutely know that your team are gonna be and actually live the change that you wanna see. They're not just gonna wait, they're gonna be doing it now. And as they do it now, I know they're gonna have fun and they're gonna create joy. They're gonna create belonging. And so in the actual being of themselves and being their best selves, they're going to just send that that ray of light out to everybody else that politics can be different and it should be better. And I know you're, you're saying that. So my message to your supporters is to actually um, be the change you want to see, to, to always be yourself, be your best selves, to, you know, to, to, not, to not get dragged down into how politics used to be. And, I, and I'm really inspired that already the change that I see is taking place. Already I see people in the Liberal Party wanting to better understand what it is that's going on. 
you know, how, how does this all happen? And they're curious. So the idea that you can welcome them, not, not worry about your opposition, but help them learn about how to do politics better. And, and tonight, just before I came on, I was talking to my colleague, Helen Haynes, and I was saying, Helen, what is it? What would be my message to the people of North Sydney? And she said, well, I hope on election day that they have as much fun as we had in Indi, that they're making cupcakes, that they're sharing and talking, and that there's such a vibe of positivity around the competition that it will forever change people's idea of what politics is. So in wishing you well, I, I am just sending out my blessing of, for everybody. And the final thing I'm going to say, Kylie, is I'm a long way away today. We're in Victoria, clearly. And I will come to Canberra for your first speech. And I'm going to be there. And I wish you as much well because for my first speech, we had um, busloads of people from northeast Victoria travel to Canberra. They filled the gallery with orange, which was my colour. So you'll be pink. And they, when I finished my term, busloads came again to say thank you for what I'd done. And so I want to share with you that absolute joy of being picked by your community to represent them and that know that they will be with you on your journey and that will be your greatest strength. So, and I'm here as well, of course, but I just wish you so much love and joy and affection and an opportunity to really enjoy the campaign, mm -hmm. to, to suck all the to suck all the wonderfulness out of it and not get dragged down into the depths that we know we don't want to be part of. Mm. Uh, that's brilliant, Cathy. And I think you're right. You know, you met the North Sydney crew before I met them. So I've been embraced by the people who started this movement and I'm really, really very grateful to them for having the courage. I think um, I love what you just said then about it's, it's the way we want to do politics. You know, I think that probably comes back to my heritage that, you know, more often than not, I, I could probably would take both hands and both feet for me to count the number of times people have said to me, you can't do it that way. That's not how you do it, Kylie. You can't do it that way. Um, and I just, I'm really looking forward to us doing it our way. You know, this there aren't rules we have to play by other than the electoral rules. Obviously, there is a, you know, there's a framework we're existing in. But, um, yeah, I think this is North Sydney's chance to stand up and say, this is how we want to do politics and, and this is how we want to be heard. Um, you know, I think it was not that long ago that I think it may have been our Prime Minister stood in a room somewhere and said that, you um, what was it? The national energy policy would not be dictated by people living in the inner northern city area. And I actually found that so disrespectful. I just thought there was no need to single us out. But you know what? If you want to know what our opinion is, I'm here now to tell you, um, because that's that's what I speak, you know, is North Sydney's opinion. And I love the, the power of independence is I can vote the way my electorate wants me to vote on every single matter. You know, I will not be um, bound by a party political point of view. So um, my party is these people. And um, just quietly, I did vote for the Liberal Party at the last election and because I was hopeful. Um, I've hoped for a really long time, but I think now is the time to set aside hope and actually be the people we want to be. Thank you so much, Cathy, from Indi. It's uh, so great to hear from you. Uh, there's about 440 people joining us on this magnificent uh, meeting today, probably more than we could ever have had, um, you know, in a pub or perhaps, uh, well, North Sydney over, we probably could have managed it quite happily. Um, so it's great that you're all joining us. Thrilled to see so many people. And, yes, I really reflect on that idea of engagement, you know, um, you know, a lot of the comedy stuff I've done in the past, you know, sometimes we go down and do vox pops on, on a beach or in a street and ask people questions about who's in parliament. And there's two groups. There's the ones that go, I don't know. Mm. I literally cannot name those people. Or those that go, I can't stand all of them. And, and we can't be that polarised about it. There has to be a sense of engagement, Kylie. And I know that's, that's, what, that's a big part of being an independent. 100% Julia and I think you know for me I, going back to that last election I couldn't believe I was standing in a queue where the people in front of me and behind me were still discussing how they were going to vote or even if they were going to vote you know discussing the donkey vote and um, I just think it's 
we, it's such a privilege to be a part of this incredible democracy, you know, and I know that probably sounds like a drag and maybe it sounds like, you know, I'm kind of giving the growing up speech, but we have a voice, every single person's vote. This is what I love about our democracy. Every vote is equal. Doesn't matter where you've come from, doesn't matter where you're going, your vote is the same as the person standing next to you. And we have the right to exercise that vote in a way that aligns with our values. So, you know, I'm I'm very, I respect everybody's opinion and I will be very happy for people to follow their beliefs to the polls. Um, and if they say they believe we need more gas, you know, power plants, that we need to lock people up indefinitely, that we need to treat people differently, then they can vote a different way because that's not what I stand for. And what I will be really disappointed is if people are walking in saying that they don't really know who they're voting for, so they're just going to pick a name or vote the way that their, you know, parents did. But on that, just, I know we've got to move on, but I did just want to say, um, I also want to make a really, a very special and strong appeal to um, young North Sydney siders. You know, I am a mother of three. I have an 18-year-old, a 16-year-old, and a 14-year-old. I have beautiful nieces and nephews. And I listen to them unendingly in the ambitions that they have and the world they want to see. And I think if there was another motivating factor for me running, it's them. You know, like this, I feel like this is a generational reckoning for my generation. And I just want the younger people in North Sydney to know that, your voice matters even more to me because I recognise this is your future, you know, and we need to take that responsibility seriously and we need to act now. Um, the time for kicking it down the line is, is gone. So, you know, just reflecting on what Tim said, I imagine there's going to be lots of talk in the like next few months about what Australia is doing um, in the coming years. Mm -hmm. I just want to be really clear. I think for our electorate, it's about what happens by 2030 and 2035, not 2050 or 2060. And um, that's within our, our control. So let's grab it. Let's do it. Let's be it. Our next uh, visitor that's coming into chat and wish you the best is uh, Nikki Hartley. She's one of Australia's leading uh, economists with a specialty in climate. Uh, she's a media commentator and a North Sydney resident. Hi there, Nikki. Hi there, Julia. Hi, everyone. And first and foremost, Kylie, um, from the moment I met you, I've just been so excited to have you in our, our court. Um, you know, I, somebody who works on economic issues, especially climate, I've had my head in my hands many times, especially in the last 18 months. And to think that you are acting as this beacon of hope for all of us, that we might actually finally bring change to Canberra. Um, the story of climate change doesn't have to be one of doom and gloom. The economic opportunity is huge. Um, and you're hearing a lot of that from the UN General Assembly now, but you know, economists have known this for a long time. If we look at the costs and benefits, yes, we have to invest up front, but the benefits that we will reap are huge. And if we don't act, not only do we bear all the costs of climate disasters, but we're losing out on the opportunities for new industry. The New Zealand government's already working with the cement industry to create a carbon neutral cement industry. Sweden's doing green steel and already exporting trials to Volvo. We want to be on the front foot of all of this. And I know that you, having spoken to you, embrace, you know, what is good about climate, how we can adapt really good policies. Um, I love the way that you read voraciously, um, explore the, the issues, you know, in such detail to get on top of them. It's really, really impressive. Um, and as a longtime resident of North Sydney, I'm just thrilled to have you uh, representing us in, in Canberra. It really does give us hope. And like you, you know, I worry about my kids' future. Uh, and so for them to have somebody, they're all voting age now. Uh, only one of them lives in this electorate, but she's on board as well. So, um, you know, really thrilled to have you here. And thank you and congratulations. And, you know, we're all in your corner. Thank you, Nikki. You know, I think... Um, well, you've been so incredibly generous in terms of helping me get my head around where things are at. And, you know, obviously that's extraordinary of you. Thank you. I think um, the thing I find fascinating is that, you know, we've identified that there are these 
three or four macro issues that are impacting across our entire seat. So that is faster action on client, climate, a forward focused economy, um, integrity at the federal level and equality for all. And sometimes when you talk about those things, they can feel like really big issues. But the thing I'm most excited by is actually that North Sydney as an electorate, we can be a leader. And you and I have discussed this. You know, this is about no, I, I, so I, North Sydney, I believe, can be the capital of electrical vehicles. You know, we should be um, moving in that way and showing other communities how to embrace that and be that. We have our solar panels on our roof. You know, when it comes to integrity, we have matters going on in our own electorate at the moment, whether that's the beaches tunnel um, or the stuff that's going on around, you know, the North Shore Hospital. These are matters of integrity at, at our local level. And equality is also something at our local level in terms of making sure all voices are heard and all people are equally represented. So, and I think you've been a massive part of helping me understand that, you know, that yes, there's, there are big issues we need to deal with, the structure of our energy grid, you know, it's a big issue. Um, but we can all actually do stuff here and now, which will set ourselves up for a faster transition. And I think what I love about it is, is an economic argument. To not move in this direction is a bad economic decision. So, you know, I think people um, will shout down and say, but what about, you know, the loss of um, industry? The reality is we're already losing industry because we're not moving forward fast enough. Um, you taught me that solar panels were invented here in Australia. I didn't know that until you told me that. And then somebody else was telling me recently that wind turbines, the props for wind turbines were actually, there was a massive manufacturing site for those originally in Tasmania, and then they went. So, you know, I think this is the opportunity for Australia to step up, develop and lead the world, not lag behind everybody else. Love it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nikki. And our final guest for this evening is the independent member for Warringah, Zali Stegel, MP. Hello, Zali. Hello. It's so exciting to be here. And I, I look, I'm, I know you're all wearing your beautiful peach, but I've still got to have some turquoise. But it's all right. The colours go well together. But I wanted to say, Kylie, congratulations for stepping up and congratulations to everyone in North Sydney to how much the movement has grown, the conversations. Um, and it is so good to know that neighbouring to Warringah, um, you're absolutely engaging and looking at the such important issues around climate, um, around integrity, around cleaning up our politics, I think really important, and setting us up for the future. So the crossbench is a great place to be. Um, I get asked all the time about, you know, why do we need more independence and how important is the crossbench? And it's absolutely how we can ensure we have good government um, and good policies um, to ensure there's a collaborative approach towards making sure we have good law that passes parliament. Um, so I've had a couple of chats with Kylie and I'm really excited to know, um, you know, to see her broaden that conversation and really get give North Sydney a choice. You know, the, the hardest part at election time is we have compulsory voting, but you can only vote for what's on the ballot paper. Um, and people need to be able to identify with a voice and, and feel that there's someone that they can trust that is going to represent them. And I think Carly will absolutely be able to deliver that. Thank God. Thanks, Sally. I mean, I we talked earlier, I talked about Karen and Kathy being massive, you know, um, inspiration for stepping up. But I think watching you take on that Warringah seat in the last election and the way that the Warringah community rallied behind you, it, it was really special and it was important. And I think, you know, I look over the last three years, some of the most significant proposed legislative reform has come from people like yourself with your climate bills, um, Helen Haynes with her integrity commission bills, Andrew Wilkie with his bills looking at, you know, responsibility of gambling organisations. And I just am so um, grateful that you have stepped up to drive those conversations back into the house, because I think one of the things that perhaps we're not seeing as much as we should is the debate that should be taking place between electorates. You know, I understand there's probably very good people involved in politics that sit within the parties. And to be honest, I feel a little bit sorry for them that their opinions are lost 
in a party room. You know, they go away and have their discussions somewhere else. Mm. And then when they leave that room, they're told how to vote and that's how their vote will be cast. Wouldn't it be amazing if all of those conversations could be brought back into the chamber and every voter in Australia could actually have a very clear understanding of what their member was saying and, you know, who how they were representing us. So I'm really looking forward to um, hopefully having the opportunity to work with you and others on the crossbench to bring that conversation back out into the open and to make sure the conversation that's being had is being had on behalf of the electorates. And, you know, you're right, North Sydney, we're, we're right here beside you in Moringa. And um, although sometimes I think you guys would probably try and stop us from getting over the spit bridge if we all wanted to move on mass. <laughs> um, but I think it's so exciting to think we could be leaning in together to to really, you know, bring about this change that we all recognise. So, um, yeah. Because I guess in the, I don't know how much everyone would realise. So the major parties have pages. So this is the first, what I learned when I first came into Parliament was um, the, there's two walls of pages when you walk in and the major parties each have a pager. And so, so many times I've come into the chamber for a division and a vote um, and the members of each side are looking at their pager and just following the herd. They are not engaging with what they're voting on or in any way. So it's really important. I think it's an absolute abdication of democracy um, in that sense. And it, it, we have to reverse that you can you can get such a better outcome for your community um, and it's not just in the votes in parliament it is also in what you deliver on the ground for your community and that's the most incredible privilege is putting together a team that delivers you know whether it's NDIS and aged care or helping people with exemptions you can really do so much in your community so best of luck to the whole team thanks Sally Thank you so much, Sally. And yeah, Kylie, it reminds me, you know, when you hear that story about the pages, I thought I knew how certain things worked in, in Parliament. For example, I thought you couldn't have alcohol in there. Wow, <laughs> how wrong I was. Um, I mean, mortified, right? And uh, But when you hear that story about the pages, I'm just genuinely shocked by that. I'm genuinely surprised by that. And I, it's not about having a go at anyone. I, I just didn't think it's how it worked. And I think for a long time, you know, maybe we have to get our own responsibility sometimes as, as, as voters. We don't really want to know or, or seek to know. But I feel like there's a real change brewing at the moment because we're frightened of the future and, and COVID has really socked it to us. And, um, and more than ever, I feel like people are, are really wanting to get engaged um, what are your campaign plans now as you head into the election, Kylie? Well, you know, it's it's week one. It's Wednesday. <laughs> week one. Sure. sure. <laughs> and I, but I do have to say it has been extraordinary. The the level of interest in what we're doing. Um, it's week, you know, Wednesday of week one for me. It's certainly not week one for the, the people that have been behind North Sydney's independent push. But I, I have found that the majority of questions that we've been getting is, you know, what's your policy? Where do you stand on this? What, you know, when will you be releasing your policies? And I guess this is a really important message for everyone to, um, to be aware of. As an independent, I am not dictated to on my policies. You know, so it comes back to what you were just saying before, Julia. There's no page there that tells me where I need to stand or how I need to vote. Um, the policies that are developed now through this campaign uh, will be the policies that this electorate want to see taken forward. So, you know, I've had the opportunity in the last month leading up to the announcement of my running to speak with some incredibly um, intelligent people across our electorate on the issues of, you know, a faster action on climate on the issues of integrity at the federal level, on the issues of equality for all people. And I'm absolutely gobsmacked by the people that we have here that are the ones that should be being listened to. You know, these are the people that are in a very good position to help us shape um, healthy, sustainable policy. And so the priority for me in the however long we've got before an election is, is called is to listen. You know, I really do want, I encourage every person. I mean, firstly, I want to say thank you to everyone who's given even a small amount of your time tonight to come here. Um, I think that's so um, reassuring and it's, it's fabulous. But I want you to know that for every person sitting on this call, your voice matters. 
you know, your vote matters. And um, this is an opportunity for you to put your hand up and say, I'd like to be more involved. You know, I, I was having an exchange today with somebody um, through Facebook, a, a, a younger female who's involved in you know environmental politics and science and and I said come and get involved please because I don't okay this is what I do need to say I don't have all the answers I really don't and I'm never going to pretend that I do but what I do know is that there are people out there who do have the answers and if there's one thing that's driven me a little bit crazy about politics in the last little bit is that I think there are too many people who actually think they're experts on matters that are making decisions and they're not the right experts to be making those decisions. So I think, you know, from here on in, it's a process of listen, um, formulate a position, feed it back to the community, gather the response and get ourselves to a place and space where we can feel really comfortable that we know what we're going into to Canberra to advocate for. And a lot of that stuff is already happening. You know, like we have Zali's climate bills they're sitting down in that house. You know, they didn't even make it out of the parliamentary committee and our local members sat on that committee and reviewed them and sent them back out. You know, we have Helen Haynes's integrity, the bill she has um, suggested for the integrity commission is impeccable. Some of our brightest legal minds participated in the production of that bill and yet it was sent out and a much watered down version has been reintroduced. Um, I think to have, as Zali sort of touched on, the potential is, you know, two or three more people like me and Zali and Helen and Andrew, um, we actually can bring that conversation back out where everybody else can see it and hear it. And I think um, I need to make sure that whenever I speak, I'm speaking with a voice that resonates with my electorate. So I do want to make that very clear to people listening tonight too. I'm answerable to you that's you know that's where I have to return and I think that you know again Zali and Helen have set some amazing examples on how to be completely transparent with your electorate you know you can go to Zali or Helen's website any day of the week and know exactly what matters are being brought into the house and you know very transparent on um, where they're thinking and constantly seeking input on how they would like that the electorate would like to see them vote um, how incredible is that how active how refreshing. is that? How refreshing. How refreshing. Like a, like a cool breeze, if you don't mind. Yeah. Like Correct. When was um, the last time you met someone who stood up and said, I don't know everything? You know, know. Like, Me, like... always. I'm still fiddling with the mute button. Uh, Kristen, uh, over to you uh, for any comments uh, from the chat. Well, it's been quite funny. There was... I didn't, I nearly giggled out loud because there was a section in the chat in the beginning discussing the t-shirt colour selection. Um, someone was quite keen on turquoise. They loved Warringah's turquoise. They thought that was nicer than pink, but I, I think most people resolved that pink, peachy pink in tink is the colour and we love it. So we're not changing that. So that's that. We heard a little bit during the week and on this chat about university funding, housing, mm. for, housing affordability, Certainly questions about the Billow family and how Kylie will support or not support that family and their fate. Uh, questions about young people on the screen. We really need young people to be involved. Um, mm. People saying, where are the young people? They are harder to engage. The, we're talking about people in their 20s. We do have young indies going. Hopefully we can fire them up too. Um, and we also had support from the other electorates. Thank you, Bradfield and Hughes. And I think there was Raringa. We've got electorates all around us doing just what we're doing. And it's great to have this mutual support. We're all so different, aren't we? Each electorate is different, but we all are looking for that transparency, that accountability, that integrity of process so that no matter what your electorate's issues are, and they're all coming up on the chat and they come through on the emails during the week, you can see how your member is making decisions and representing your community, not the community up in Queensland or WA or Melbourne for us, it's the North Sydney community. So mm. people were also talking about the importance of the community voice coming through our representative rather than the party voice coming down at us through a politician. So pretty good, but don't worry, um, we're going to have a lot more time for Kylie to reply to questions at another town hall event in a few weeks. So keep an eye out for that. Um, 
there'll be news on that, as I said, in newsletters and in our socials. So please keep them coming. Kylie wants to hear, don't you, Kylie? Absolutely. Excellent. Um, I want to thank all our guests for joining in. In, in the, modern, the wonders of modern technology that we've been able to do this, we've had more people be able to join us uh, uh, in spite of COVID, which is just terrific. Uh, I want to wish all the people in North Sydney uh, well in what goes, comes up next. And to you, Kylie, all the best. It's really exciting to see someone stepping up again. And um, congratulations. Oh, thank you, Julia, and thank you for everything that you're doing to really um, elevate this conversation. You know, I think we started the night by saying it's a really exciting time for us, I think, as Australians, because we are, politics is becoming accessible. You know, you don't have to be a certain person or look a certain way to get involved. And I think you are a voice at the moment out there across our country, encouraging people to just have their say. So thank you for doing what you're doing and for moderating tonight so well. Just well done. <laughs> uh, I know we're running close to time, but I, if people will just kind of humour me for a minute more. I just wanted to... Um, kind of finish with a few thoughts, I guess. The first is I want to be, I want to make the point really clearly to everybody that I'm, this is about our electorate and this is about me being able to develop a voice that accurately reflects your voice and the things that are most important to you. Um, we are a campaign that is built on opportunity and positivity. You know, I think that it's important that we live in hope and we actually move towards hope rather than thinking that we need to shrink in fear or to be smaller than what we currently are. Um, as Kristen touched on, I think we've talked a little bit along the way tonight, it's really important um, that I hear from you, you know, and it's already been lovely at just walking around my local neighbourhood. People have started stopping me and, and telling me stories and wanting to talk to me about different matters. And I just want you honestly to know that that is, that is my commitment to you. My ears are open and my mouth will be shut when it comes to things like that as I listen. Because I think one of my favourite sayings is that um, I'll argue like I know I'm right, but I'll listen like I know I'm wrong. And I think that's the capacity to actually bring about a really positive change for our, our community and our society. So um, there's heaps of ways for people to get involved. Uh, please, you know, go to the website, kyliekink.com.au. And yes, it is weird to have a website in your name. I don't know how other people have found that, but that's weird. Um, but please register. You know, there will be a newsletter every Friday that will go out. And that's a great way to stay in touch um, with the campaign. Also, please, if you're interested, register as a volunteer. There's a thousand ways you can get involved in uh, as a volunteer. And actually, it might interest people to know that wearing a T-shirt is volunteering. You are a living, breathing, walking billboard for us. So, you know, please um, go onto the website and register and the team will be back in touch with you to get you one of these amazing T-shirts as quickly as possible because I couldn't be prouder to have people out there walking and spreading our message further and further. Um, I need to say we, we're a community campaign and at the end of the day, at some point in time, we're going to have to start raising money to actually pay for things like advertising and share a voice. We don't have a party bank behind us at all. And um, to date, there's been very little money spent in this campaign, actually, because the, the people involved have been extraordinarily generous with their time. You know, it, it reminds me of when I was working with the crew on We're Better Than This Australia. This is a really truly passionate group of people that have stepped up and said, I'm going to bring myself and everything I am to this cause. Um, but if you can at all, you know, if you want to get involved in the campaign and you're in a position to help us in funding, that would be amazing. Um, it doesn't have to be large amounts. You know, I think the power of what we're doing is actually it's the culmination of small amounts. And if I know that to be true, my many years in fundraising, I've, I've worked, you know, for both the McGrath Foundation and Camp Quality. What I know is that you get you get more done when a bulk of people step up and to be counted than you do with just one or two. So this is this is a we want 99.9% .9 of the electorate involved um, in building this movement. So um and I do also have to say, you know, that there will be another, I guess you call it a town hall or is it a Zoom hall? I don't really know what we call them anymore, but, you know, 
this is crazy times you know if if honestly if we could have it any other way myself and the team here at NSI want nothing more than to be meeting you personally and hearing your voice personally and really taking the time to get you know, get to know everybody and to listen to what you want us to be representing. In the meantime, we're very lucky to have technology at the end of our figures these days. And so, you know, this is our chance to make sure we use that really effectively. So there is an email address, which is admin at kylietink.com.au. Please send your thoughts through and um, reach out. And as I said, feel feel free. This is a this is a community effort, and all all are welcome. So um, we can do this. We actually can be the change we want to see. And what an amazing thing that would be able to tell our kids that we were part of that. I think that would be pretty special. So. Yeah, just thank you to everybody for giving us your time tonight. And I really do look forward to meeting all of you um, in the coming coming weeks and months. Thank you, Kylie. Uh, a really special thank you to you, to Julia, and all our special guests this evening. You've made it a bit extra special for all of us and for Kylie. Uh, we've worked on this for a long time and it has just been a volunteer job. Um, hopefully going forward with some donations and supporters and volunteers will become a machine that does challenge the Liberal Party in this seat. Um, from this point on, you'll probably be hearing a whole lot less from me, uh, rightly so, and a whole lot more from Kylie as North Sydney's Independent continues to build the structures and volunteers to support Kylie's independent community campaign. Thank you everyone for coming to Kylie Tink's launch event. We can do this, we actually will do this because we have to do this. Uh, we have to do it this election. So together, let's change the climate in Canberra. Thank you, everyone. Authorised by Kylie Tink, North Sydney, New South Wales.